Hey everybody. This is my brackish tank and I'm just about to do a water change on it. And a few days ago I had someone ask me a very good question. They asked me how do I maintain my specific gravity during water changes. So today we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to go over how I do a water change and the importance of maintaining the proper specific gravity and so on and so forth. So first of all, what do I mean when I say specific gravity, in case you're not entirely sure? Specific gravity is a measurement of the density of the water. And the reason the density will increase is because of the dissolved salts that are in the water. So the higher the specific gravity is really just a graduated scale of measuring the salinity of the water. So what we need to do when we make brackish water is we need to bring the specific gravity or the salinity up to a certain point. Brackish water is water that is saltier than fresh water. In other words, it has a higher specific gravity than fresh water, but it is not yet so salty that it would be considered marine water. So it has a lower specific gravity than marine water. And the actual determining points of brackish is 1.005 is where the low end begins. Fresh water, pure fresh water is 1.000. So 1.005, as we increase in salinity, is where you get into what is considered low-end brackish. I keep this tank at 1.008, so I'm still down in that low end, but I'm not at the very bottom of the scale. When you get up to about 1.015 or maybe 1.017, that is the very upper limits of what will still be considered brackish. If you get a specific gravity higher than that, you are now getting into marine water. So that's what brackish water is. And how important is it to maintain a very certain specific gravity? Well. It's not really that important, honestly. Brackish fish are actually urihaline fish. Brackish defines the conditions they live in. They live in brackish water. But the animals are urihaline, and that means they can withstand a wide range of salinities without really going through any acclimation period. So, for example, if you're doing a water change and you shift your specific gravity, um... It, it's not really going to make that big of a difference. If you've got a marine tank, especially a marine tank that has certain corals, uh, the, the, the specific gravity has to stay very, very stable. If it shifts at all, it can really stress out or even kill some of the more sensitive animals. Animals like that, uh, freshwater fish included, animals that have to stay in one specific gravity or another, are known as stenohaline animals, and that means they live in a very narrow range of salinity. So freshwater fish have to stay right where they are, and marine fish have to stay right where they are. Urihaline fish, like these gobies and this puffer and live bears, such as mollies and guppies and a very variety of other fish, are urihaline animals. So they can go in a wide range of salinity without really undergoing any acclimation period. So let's say, for example, I really had to do a water change in this tank today, but I did not have any marine salts to make up a new batch of brackish water. Well, if I had to, I could just do a water change with fresh water. It would reduce the specific gravity in the tank by a little bit, but it wouldn't bother the fish at all. I could actually take them out of this tank and put them in a freshwater tank for the time being while I did some maintenance on it or whatever and then move them back into this tank without any acclimation period at all. Uh, I have a lot of people ask me about how long they should take to acclimate their fish and so on and so forth. With the urihaline animals or what are generally called brackish fish there really is no need to worry about that. When I bring a new one home, or if I was going to take a molly out of one of my other tanks and put it in this tank, I would do the 20 minute, you know, just like I brought it home from the fish store and I was acclimating it to my quarantine tank. I'd give it, you know, 15 minutes so that the temperature equilibrated. Every so often I'd put a little bit of the tank water in the bag with it, and after 15 minutes I'd put it in the tank and it would be done. So, 
The specific gravity remaining rock solid stable during water changes in a brackish system is not really super critical. Just by nature of the animals, they can withstand a fair amount of shifting around. Where they live in the wild, in brackish environments, are estuaries and tidal basins. It's where rivers flow into the sea. The animal, depending on where it swims, depending on the tide coming in or out, depending on how rainy it is, their specific gravity shifts dramatically all the time. Just by the natural course of the tides changing in a day, these animals might go from full marine to full fresh and back in a 12-hour period. So they're sort of built to do that. They can bounce around in salinity without much issue at all. So having said all that, how do I actually maintain the specific gravity between water changes? Well, it's very easy. When I do water changes on this tank, or any of my small tanks really, but for this case I do it uh, by hand, and when I say by hand I mean I use a bucket and a simple gravel vac, and I do that for the sake of measurement. I have a brackish water reservoir, which is an identical bucket, and I mix up a batch of brackish water, and we'll go over that in just a minute. So I've got a five gallon bucket of brackish water set up and waiting and ready to go. You should probably make it at least 24 hours in advance if you can. If you have to use it right away, uh, you can. If you make up a batch and you have to put it right in the tank as you make it, um, you can do that if you have to, it's fine. But I recommend giving it at least a few hours for the gases to equilibrate and so on and so forth when you make up a batch of water. Never mix it up in the tank. Always mix your brackish water up in advance in some sort of reservoir, whether it's a bucket or a tub or another tank or whatever. Always pre-mix your water before you put it in your tank with animals. So you just get yourself your five-gallon bucket. You set it up with brackish water that is the proper specific gravity or salinity that you want. And then when you do a water change, you pull that much water out, and then you take that same bucket, which is my reservoir, and you put that much water right back in, and the uh, specific gravity does not shift at all. And when I say that bucket is my reservoir, I don't mean that bucket specifically. I have another bucket just like it, and I keep that one ready to go with brackish water. So let me get on with that and I will show you how I mix up the batch of water itself. It's a piece of cake, but at least I'll go through the motions of showing you how I do it. So sit tight and then we'll get a before and after on this tank and we'll see how much of a difference it makes when I clean it up a little bit and get rid of some of those snail shells and wipe the glass down, etc. All right, so this fancy piece of equipment here is my brackish water reservoir. As I've already mentioned, it's simply the same type of bucket we just had as my wastewater bucket that we did the water change into. So when you're making brackish water, you need to be able to measure the specific gravity. There's no way to check other than using some type of device to measure it. What I use is a refractometer. It looks fancy, but you can get one for around or just under twenty dollars on Amazon. It's called a refractometer. That will give you your most accurate reading of your specific gravity. You can also buy what is called a hydrometer which is much less expensive but it gives you a really close ballpark of where your specific gravity is. So keep in mind if you're keeping so-called brackish animals or urihaline animals they don't need really, really super specific. So if you want to buy the $10 hydrometer, go right ahead. That will give you a very much accurate enough reading of your specific gravity to deal with brackish animals. You'll be very much close enough. So when I mix up my water, I've done this for long enough now that I know how much to uh, salt to put in and I don't bother measuring on every occasion that I do it anymore. I do double check from time to time just to make sure my measurements haven't gone astray or anything like that and the way I do it is this is a five gallon bucket almost to the dot. I have it uh, marked in graduations and five gallons comes right up to here. So we are a five gallon bucket. I use a standard kitchen measuring cups. You want to use the one half cup and I scoop it up so it's as much as I can hold on top of it. I've already done it because I'm not going to be able to do it with one hand, so the salt's already in the bucket. 
but you scoop up a half a cup as mounded up as you can get it. I suppose you could maybe do the two thirds at a level. I don't know. I've never done it that way. I've just always done a huge heaping mound of one half cup into a five gallon bucket and that comes out almost smack on 1.008 every time. So I don't have to really measure anymore with the refractometer. I just know that that one great big scoop in one five gallon bucket and I'm done. It's as simple as that. You mix this up in advance and then when you do your water change, you've already got it ready to go. You take five gallons out, you put five gallons back in and the specific gravity in your tank doesn't change at all. So no need to show you actually the process of me putting water in a bucket and stirring it up, but that's basically what you do. You put water in the bucket, stir it up, make sure all that salt's good and dissolved. Another key point is you want to use marine salts. You do not use aquarium salt. Aquarium salt is simply sodium chloride. You need to use marine salts or sea salts, um, not sea salt but sea salts for a marine aquarium. I also have a water softening system that runs through an RO system and we follow the line all the way down here and I keep a big 65 gallon reservoir of RO water and this is what I use to mix up my brackish water and we'll get into that in a little bit when we go back over and have a look at the tank. So sit tight, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, there you go. So I threw a little snail in there. Actually, I threw a pretty big snail in there for Butterbean to work on while we finish this video up. He seems really agitated and has been pacing the glass the whole time, very distracting. So now he's going to have... Uh, his attention divided between the camera and that snail he's working on down there. But I just wanted to finish up by making a few points about using RO water in the process of mixing up the brackish water. The idea is you want to start with as pure of water as possible because the brackish water has been mixed up to a certain recipe. You've got a certain amount of this kind of salt and a certain amount of that kind of mineral and when you're starting with, say, tap water, you don't know what's in your tap water necessarily. It's already got a certain amount of calcium in it. It might have some magnesium in it. There's all sorts of things that may be in your tap water. So I always use what is sometimes called the cake analogy, or I've had people <laughs> refer to it as my cake analogy. If you were baking a cake and you were mixing up your dry ingredients, you got flour and baking soda, maybe a little pinch of salt, they all sort of blend together and you can't tell what's what. If you were going to mix that cake up, would you do that in a bowl that already had some amount of white powder in the bottom that you weren't sure of? Or would you start with a nice clean empty bowl so that you knew exactly how much flour went in there, you knew exactly how much baking soda went in there, etc. You wouldn't start with a bowl that already had some unknown quantity of those ingredients in it and then have to guess at the difference. So it's the same sort of mentality when you're mixing up brackish water. You want to start with an empty bowl. You know, you want to start with a clean slate and add only the ingredients you want to add to it rather than starting with an unknown amount of dissolved solids in your water already. Now, having said that, I will refer you back to the earlier part of this video where I was talking about how much room for error you have in a brackish system. So it really isn't critical. Don't get yourself worried if you don't have an RO system, you don't have to go out and buy one. Um, it's just, it's handy to use if you've got it. If you've got to use tap water, then go ahead and use tap water. Uh, the, the additional magnesium or the additional calcium or something that might be in your tap water is not going to make a difference. So don't let that worry you. I'm just giving you the ideal way of doing doing it would be to use the RO water and in fact I don't even have an RO DI which is a deionizer and it gets every last little bit of dissolved solids out of the water. I simply have an RO system and I do come out on the end of it with about 11 or 12 parts per million of dissolved solids even in my RO water. So again these numbers are so small it's negligible in a brackish system and I wouldn't worry about your 
uh, tap water either if that's all you've got to work with is tap water so go ahead and use that the other thing I would say is when you're doing your top off, if you'll notice in the beginning of this video the tank was a little bit low. If I was going to top this tank off rather than do a water change, what I would have done was topped it off with RO water. The reason I would have topped it off with RO water is because as the water evaporates out of the tank it leaves the salts behind. So if I used more brackish water to top it off, I would have been adding more salts. And it basically is distilling down and concentrating the salts, and your water will get very much saltier if you continue to use, you know, say twice a week you topped it off and you used brackish water. By the third time, or by the time you got around to a water change, you would have dramatically increased your specific gravity. So you always want to top off with either the whatever your version of the starting water is whether you're using RO water to begin with or you're using tap water to begin with that's what you want to use to top off the tank and bring it back up to its full level if again if you use the brackish water to top it off you're going to be really really increasing your salinity in the tank so on that note I will also add when the water is low as it was when we began the water change on this video if I were to simply pull five gallons out and then put five gallons back in, it didn't bring me back up to the top of the tank. It only brought me up to where the water was originally. So that's what I did, and then I finished topping off with RO water. So again, I only put back in what I took out, and that keeps the salinity stable. I didn't fill it all the way back up with brackish water again because that would have been adding about a gallon and a half or two gallons additional brackish water to what was already in there originally. So hopefully that's not too confusing. And on one final note I will point out that the reason I was making a, a issue out of using the same kind of buckets is simply because they are stackable. I use the bottom bucket to drain the water into and then I bring in my reservoir and I can stack that right on top. I keep them positioned directly in front of the tank when I'm actually doing the water change and that way I can use the scoop and I don't have to keep bending down or picking a heavy bucket up and the stackable aspect of those buckets just makes it really convenient and that's the only reason I really stressed using the same type of bucket. So there you go, hope that helped somebody, hope that made a little bit of sense and I didn't convolute everything even more than it already was. So please subscribe if you're not already. Uh, again, this is my brackish tank. Thanks again for watching it. See you real soon in the next one.